Have you ever wondered about the man behind the infamous Rhodes Scholarships, Cecil John Rhodes? Let's delve into the enigma that was Rhodes, born in the year 1853 in Bishop Stortford, England. From humble beginnings, he was the fifth son in a family of 11 children, raised by a vicar father and a devoted mother. Rhodes's early life was largely unremarkable except for his fragile health. He was an asthmatic, a condition which greatly impacted his childhood. This would later prove to be a turning point in his life, as at the tender age of 17, he was sent to South Africa, his brother's cotton farm to be precise, in hopes that the warmer climate would improve his health. Little did anyone know then, this move would set the stage for a tale of ambition, power and influence that would forever shape a continent. So, who was this man who left England as a teenager and went on to shape the future of South Africa? From a cotton farm to a diamond mine, Rhodes's journey was nothing short of extraordinary. In the mid-19th century, a young Cecil Rhodes found himself in the heart of South Africa. With an astute eye for opportunity, he ventured into the diamond mining business, a decision that would forever alter the course of his life and the diamond industry. In the late 1870s, he co-founded the De Beers Mining Company, named after the De Beers brothers from whom he had bought a large land claim. Rhodes and De Beers embarked on an audacious business plan to control the world's diamond supply. Through strategic acquisitions and mergers, Rhodes managed to absorb many smaller mining operations in the region into the De Beers empire. This consolidation led to a near monopoly over the world's diamond supply, a grip so tight that it allowed De Beers to control prices and supply, effectively dictating the terms of the global diamond trade. Rhodes's venture into diamond mining was not without its challenges. The volatile nature of diamond mining, coupled with the political instability of the time, presented significant obstacles. However, Rhodes's unyielding determination and keen business acumen saw him through these trials. His unorthodox methods and ruthless business tactics were often criticized, but they proved instrumental in cementing his dominance over the diamond industry. The result of this diamond monopoly was an immense accumulation of wealth for Rhodes. His fortune was so vast, it made him one of the richest men of his era. His wealth allowed him to fund various ventures, including his pursuits in politics and philanthropy. Rhodes's life was a testament to his belief in seizing opportunities and pursuing them with relentless determination. His journey from a cotton farmer's son to the undisputed king of diamonds is a compelling tale of ambition, tenacity, and the relentless pursuit of wealth and power. By age 40, Rhodes had not only monopolized the diamond industry, but was also one of the wealthiest men on earth. But Rhodes was not just a businessman, he had political ambitions too. Cecil John Rhodes, a man of many hats, had a vision that stretched beyond the glint of diamonds. His ambitions weren't confined to the business world, he sought to shape the political landscape as well. His political journey began when he was elected to the Cape Parliament in 1880, at the age of just 27. Rhodes was a firm believer in British imperialism. He held the conviction that the Anglo-Saxon race was, as he put it, the first race in the world. This belief fueled his political ambitions and spurred him on to become one of the most influential figures in the establishment and expansion of the British Empire in Africa. His political acumen coupled with his immense wealth propelled him to the position of Prime Minister of the Cape Colony in 1890. While in office, he implemented policies that significantly expanded British territory in Africa. His imperialistic aspirations led to the annexation of present-day Zimbabwe and Zambia, then known as Rhodesia, named in his honor. However, his political career was not without controversy. His tenure as prime minister was marked by the implementation of policies that would lay the groundwork for apartheid in South Africa. The Glen Grey Act of 1894, for instance, was designed to limit African land ownership and increase the supply of cheap African labor, which was largely used in his diamond mines. Rhodes's political career ended abruptly with the Jameson Raid scandal in 1895, which was an ill-fated attempt to overthrow the Transvaal government. Despite this setback, his influence in shaping South Africa's political landscape cannot be underestimated. Rhodes's politics and policies left a lasting impact on South Africa, but his legacy doesn't end there. His ambitions and actions in the sphere of politics, like those in the world of business, were driven by an unquenchable desire to leave his mark on the world, a mark that continues to be felt today. A diamond magnate, a politician and a philanthropist, 
Rhodes' legacy is multifaceted. As we delve into the final chapter of his life, we find a testament to his vision and ambition in the form of the Rhodes Scholarships. Established by his will, this program was Rhodes's grand design to promote understanding and unity among English-speaking nations. It has since become one of the most prestigious scholarships in the world. Every year, it offers a ticket to Oxford University for a select group of students from across the globe, providing them the opportunity to push their intellectual boundaries and develop leadership skills. From US President Bill Clinton to Australian Prime Minister Malcolm Turnbull, from Nobel laureates to Pulitzer Prize winners, the list of Rhodes Scholars is a parade of global influencers. Their achievements in fields as diverse as politics, science, arts and social justice are a testament to the impact of these scholarships. Here we see the enduring power of Rhodes's vision as his legacy continues to shape the world through the minds and actions of these exceptional individuals. Yet the man who has left such a significant legacy was not without controversy. The very wealth that funded the Rhodes Scholarships was built on the diamond mines of South Africa, a symbol of British imperialism and the exploitation of African labor. His policies and actions, including the Jameson Raid, a botched attempt to overthrow the Boer government, have left a dark stain on his reputation. In recent years, movements such as Rhodes Must Fall have sought to challenge the glorification of Rhodes, arguing that his legacy should also acknowledge his role in promoting racial discrimination and colonial exploitation. This dichotomy, the philanthropist and the imperialist, leaves us with a complex portrait of Cecil John Rhodes. His story prompts us to question the price of ambition, the consequences of unchecked power, and the true meaning of legacy. So there you have it, the man, the myth, the enigma that was Cecil John Rhodes.